Hi, Ted Padova here. In this video, I want to talk about calculating time. The form that you see on screen is a pretty complex form. It's designed for calculating time and charges for a law firm. And what I have in this first column over here where it says time in, I have a drop down menu and I select an in time let's say 8.30 a.m. This is a 24-hour clock, by the way. And then I go over here and let's go to 11. And I'll tab out of that. You see that the total time here has been calculated at two and a half hours. And then I have this column that says personnel. And this is set up to be fixed rates for individuals who may be attorneys, legal assistants, clerical people, things like that, with all kinds of different rates. So if I open this menu up and I choose an attorney name here and hit the tab key, then you can see that the rate changes as well. And then I have a total over here on the end. The thing that I'm really concerned about is this column here where it says total time. Now this is a very complex form and it's not one that I'm going to upload to my server right away because there's just a lot more going on here than just time calculations. I have a button here to spawn pages from a template and another one that calculates a summary across all the pages that have been spawned and places the results in a summary form. Now we don't need to deal with that now because the thing I'm really concerned about is this total time column. So I'm going to close this file, not save it. And this form I'm uploading to my server and I'll post a link below this video to where you can download it. I'm going to start at the bottom here and work my way up. I have some, let me set this up with a fresh look here without any data. I have the first calculation here is going to be simplified field notation. And if I come in and let's say I add a time period, and this is just a raw field where I can just add my own time in. And let's say we'll go out at 8 o'clock. Make it simple. Tab. And you can see that my result over here is 3. Now one thing that's very important for all of these fields where I have total time, this is the result of the calculation of the time. I'm going to go to edit here and I want to point out something very important here in the format menu. I have a custom format script and this is the script that's here, like so. I have a description down here where it says that gives you the name of the script and a description of it. Basically, this is doing nothing more than formatting the field for time. And the very last item here is just a string to indicate what time measurement I'm actually calculating. In this case, it's hours. It could be minutes. Uh, we could have other kinds of different strings in there, but right now it's hours. So that's something that's very important. Now, if I move over to the Calculate tab, I have simplified field notation, and basically I'm getting the name of this field, and the, which is the in field, and then I'm getting the name of the out field. Actually, I get the out field first, and I'm going to subtract the in field, and that's exactly how that calculation is made. Just very much like you would do any kind of a subtraction using uh, either JavaScript or simplified field notation in Acrobat. The thing that makes it stay within the time format is that format item. Go back here and let's go back into this field. Once again, the format. This is the script that keeps it into a time format. Over here on the right, I have some other items. I can calculate the result in minutes and I can do it in hours. And if I type in, for example, 120 minutes, and what I'm going to do is type in 240, then basically the result is 120 minutes. And over here, I'm going to type in hours, 2.5 is in, and out is 4.0, and then the result is 90 minutes. 
and those scripts are both simplified field notation like I showed you earlier. They both have the format script and in the calculate tab you can see that I have simplified field notation for each one of these. And those are very simple scripts. Even if you don't know JavaScript, you can easily create calculations for time. The thing that to remember is to add this script down here, and the explanation is below it, to the Format tab, and your result will be formatted for time. Now we get a little more complicated up here. I've got JavaScripts, and in this field, I all in this row actually, in both of these rows, I have a rate field. And what I'm going to do is add a total over here of the time and the rate. I'm going to multiply the rate by the time and enter that in the total field over here. Now I have two ways of handling this rate. One of those ways is this open field I have here where I can type in a value. And the other way is a drop-down menu that supplies a fixed value over here. I'll explain this in a moment. So right now, if I go on my in drop-down menu, and let's say I go 1 o'clock, and I want to go until it's 2.15 and hit my tab key, that's 1 hour and 25 minutes. And this field is intended to supply a user-defined rate. So whoever you get who has a, a rate, they can type in their rate value. Let's say mine is $92 an hour and I hit the tab field, then the calculation is made here. And the way that calculation is made is with this script. Open up, let's go to the Calculate tab. And you can see that all I'm doing is I'm getting the value of the rate field and the total time field, and then over here the total time field, and I'm putting that in the amount field. Now. The other way that we can handle this is with a fixed rate that's associated with a drop-down menu choice. So for example, if you have a number of people in an office or an organization and they all have different rates and you know those predefined rates before you start, you can set it up a little different. Let's take a look at this script over here or the process. Let's go to... Uh, let's say 8.15 and somebody's out at 9.45 and we'll tab and it's one and a half hours. Now under this menu I have personnel and each one of these individuals uh, or these items in this list have a different rate. So for example a legal assistant has a different rate than one of the attorneys. So let me pick uh, Miss. Adams here who's an attorney and I'll tab and that rate then is supplied over here automatically and we the way we handle that I go over here to my rate field you see I have a JavaScript and I'm basically saying I'm going to go ahead and get this drop down menu choice over here and if uh, it's blank I'm not doing anything and just putting a value of zero in the field. And then the other items here are listed by those individuals and associated with that are their individual rates. Now, the other thing that uh, you can do is with total time over here, I just calculated the time using a script with a very special property called current value indices. And I have an explanation for what current value indices is. If you have a drop-down menu or a list box, then you can use this property to pull the selection from each one of those drop-downs or list boxes. Since list boxes have more than one choice available to you, you can have multiple choices in a list box, it would create an array as the uh, event. But uh, with drop down menus, you can basically make a selection and then have that selection then uh, subtracted or added to another selection from another drop down. And this is how it's done. What I'm doing here is I'm saying that I'm going to go to 
Well, I'll tell you what, this is a little easier on this one because I have made this a lot simpler for you. So let's go here. See, I have an in field as C in and an out field as C out. And I'm basically assigning a variable to each one of those fields. And then I'm saying I'm going to take the C out and I'm going to subtract C in from it. Now, in a normal JavaScript and regular fields, that's all you would have. But because these are drop-down menus, this current value indices property is the one that will go through and find the selected item for each one of those menus. So you can find that pretty handy if you uh, have drop-downs and you need to perform some calculations. Keep in mind that uh, that's a script that you might use frequently if you work a lot with drop-down menus. And then we come up to the very last item up here. And this area here has a couple of fields that use document level JavaScripts. Now, just to let you know, document level JavaScripts, if you don't have the tool for it, you have to go over here to the customize area and you have JavaScript as a tool, what you want to do is add that to your to tool panel over here so that when I go back over to my tools, you can see that I have my JavaScript tool here. And what I'm going to do is take a look at the document JavaScripts that we have in this current form. So I click on the tool. The menu bar changes up here and you see that you have document JavaScripts. That's what I want. I'll select that. And then I have two document JavaScripts. What's really important is not the name of the script. That name could be anything. What's important is the function name. And in this function, it says do amount calcs, and that's the same as the name of the script. However, the second one is do calculate, and the name of the script is different than that. So when we want to run this function, we would use do calculate. And let me show you where that goes. So in total time over here, let's uh, close and go to prepare form. Total time, you see I have in my calculation script do calculate. That's pulling that one document level JavaScript in and running that routine. And then the second one is under total, and I have do amount calcs. Now, where this is helpful is if you spawn a lot of pages and you have a lot of fields that are added to a PDF document, then you don't have to go individually on each one of these fields because each one of these fields have the same function. Each row is not using a different script to calculate the total. Rather than go in and explain a lot of what's going on, if you're not a JavaScript programmer, the thing to do is to start with simplified field notation and then work yourself up to creating some of these simple scripts. And as you become more familiar with JavaScript, then you might be able to go into these uh, functions at the document level and you might be able to edit those according to your own individual needs. So I can click on one of these and edit it and you can see the routine here follow along what's happening it's basically getting those fields and performing the same kind of calculations that I did earlier with these other fields so this is a quick rundown on calculating time if you're just a beginner and you're just starting out, this simplified field notation is going to work well for you. Just keep in mind that what you want to do is format your fields with this script down here. And I have an explanation for what that does down at the bottom of this form. So that takes care of calculating fields. I hope this helps some of you. And let me sign off and say to you, this is Ted Padova wishing you all the best in all your Acrobat PDF activity.